All right, we're going to look at um, assembly drawings here. And so the first thing that we're going to do is learn how to create an exploded assembly in Onshape. What the exploded assembly is going to do, it's going to allow um, your parts um, to be shown how they would be assembled together. And so over here, I'll go ahead and click Exploded Views, and I'll click Add Exploded View. And then we're going to start um, uh, creating that exploded view that we're going to need. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select uh, this pin because that's going to be the first thing that I'm going to take out of this assembly. And so when you're thinking about how to create the exploded assembly, you're, you're trying to think about how I would deconstruct uh, this assembly. And so I'm going to go ahead and drag this pin out um, to where that goes. Uh, and then we can edit our distance here. I'm going to go ahead and make that negative 230 millimeters. And notice how when I selected the next part that it brought the collar out automatically. I don't want the collar to go with that one, so I'll go ahead and uh, click the green check mark to end that. And then for the collar, I'll go ahead and select that for the next step, and I'll pull that up away from the part. Um, and let's make that uh, come up 50 millimeters, green check mark. Next part is the bolt. We'll bring that down. Let's go negative 150. And then uh, the last part will be the eye portion here. Notice how I did that again. So to fix that, I'll say that I want to not translate that. I'll go ahead and hit the green check mark and then do my next version, which I'll pull out that I component. Hmm. And we'll make that negative 100. Once I have that uh, the assembly exploded, I can go ahead and click Done. Um, that exploded view, it lives over here, so if I want to edit it, I can double click on it. I can edit the steps, and so let's say um, if I wanted to specify a different direction to, to move this or something, I could do that. If I wanted to uh, change the dimension of the explosion to 130, I can do all of that uh, right here. Um, so that's what uh, this portion or this is uh, this portion's for. So again, I'm going to edit that back. Let's change it back to 150. And that's kind of good for my explosion. So I, again, I can go ahead and click done and I can uh, minimize that. Uh, the next thing we're going to want to do is create a drawing uh, sheet for our assembly. So I'll come over here and add a new um, element to my document. We'll create a drawing. We're going to use a metric template. So I'm going to want to make sure I have ANSI A for a standard 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. And we're going to want to make sure we use, the again, the metric template. So it should say MM after it. Once that drawing template opens, uh, you'll notice that your part studios by default come up. Uh, we're going to, in this case, want to include our assemblies. So I'll go ahead and click on assemblies. I'll double click that knuckle joint assembly because that's what we want to come in. Um, and then we have options for how we're going to view this. And so we could view all the standard views front, top, right. Um, in this case, since it's a fairly uh, simple assembly, we're going to use an isometric view of it. And so I'll go ahead and, and click to see that. Um, one fifth scale looks a, a, maybe a little small, so we're going to go ahead and change that to a quarter scale or one to four. Um, and then when I have that kind of the way I want it, I'll go ahead and click to place that uh, assembly in my drawing. Um, because uh, it's an isometric view, remember we're going to want that to be shaded, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, right click on the view once it's placed and select show shaded view. Shows the shaded view of that assembly. Um, the next piece that we're going to want to put in is we're going to want to put in that exploded assembly that we created. So I'll go ahead and click Insert View again. Instead of Default under Explode Position, I'm going to ex choose Explode 1. Again, you could put in all of the different standard views for this. In our case, Isometric makes the most sense for what we're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and click to place that Isometric assembly. 
uh, somewhere down over here. Again, I can right click and select show shaded view to show the shaded view of that assembly. All right, and so uh, we've added our two kind of assembly views to our drawing sheet. Um, the next thing that we're going to want to do is uh, add a bill of materials to our sheet. And so to create that bill of materials, um, what we can do is uh, come up here to our, uh, our tool for that and select bill of materials table. You're going to have these uh, come in automatically. Um, the table. You can select which corner you want to fix it to. I'm going to pick the top left corner and then when you get the square it's going to snap into that corner for you. Mm -hmm. um, a few things to note. Our part numbers are based on the information from the actual parts as well as our materials. And so if we go into our assembly drawing here I can come over here and I can select a bill of materials table and I can see all of the columns that are going to come up in the bill of materials are here. Um, I can select that. I can add different, um, different columns. And so let's say we want to add name to that. I can go ahead and do that. And then the name of the part will show up as well. Um, so that's kind of how that uh, piece works. Um, if I go into the actual parts, I can right click on them and select properties. Here's where those part numbers come into play. And so uh, again, how this works, uh, our system will work is we'll have the, the project name. In this case, it's assembly practice. So we have AP and then we have a part number. So this is part number three of assembly practice. So we put two zeros in front and then include the part number. And so that was all done manually. Uh, again, the part names will show up as well in our assembly. And so if I come back to that assembly drawing, I can see that if I come up here and refresh, the name of the part will be added. Um, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and extend that uh, table over to where it fits the entire uh, width of my paper. I can kind of move these views around a little bit, make sure they look nice and neat and they're centered. Um, last thing that we're going to need to do for our assembly drawing is add callouts. And so here's our callout uh, tool. I can click on that. Uh, notice I can change the type of, of uh, geometry for the callout. So it could be a double circle. Um, a hexagon. In this case, we're just going to be using a circle for the callout. And all I have to do then is I can uh, select a edge on the part and I can uh, drag out that callout that references the item number within our table. All right. So once I have that, I can go ahead and click the check mark. Part number two is this part, this is a part number. A little description. Um, the part is made of steel and its name is I. I can edit that arrow uh, to other uh, parts on the uh, on the to other uh, you know lines or parts of the geometry um, so you can edit that afterwards but it does have to be touching the part and so there you go you can see how that callout works. Um, I'll go ahead and add a, a couple more callouts so let's add the rest. So our collar part. And again, we want to make this nice and neat. Um, so you can use your lines uh, to, to line your call outs um, out. So they line up uh, and make them look nice and neat like we want them to be. Last one. And again, you want to like choose somewhere on the drawing that uh, shows the part. So if you see this, that's really not uh, where I want that. So I'll go ahead and edit that call out, make them line up with my other ones. And I don't really like the way that's looking. So let's move this a little bit and move. 
that call out kind of a little here. All right, so that's looking better. We kind of have everything organized the way it needs to be now. Um, one last thing we'll show you. Again, if I go back to my assembly drawing, I have my descriptions. I can actually type in a description for these parts here. And so um, part number three is the bolt. I could give uh, those bolt dimensions here if I wanted um, to find those. If I just went into the part, I could uh, see what the size of the bolt is based on the sketch. And so you can utilize that information um, for the, this description here. You can also add that description in the actual part in the properties. You can type in that description here. And so let's say this is a um, M40 bolt. I could type in that information, hit apply, close it, go back to my drawing sheet, refresh. And then that description um, would update within my bill of materials. So the bill of materials is a really useful tool, um, especially if you're going to have parts maybe that uh, you are not going to be designing that you've purchased. You can even come in and uh, put in vendors where they're going to be um, and that kind of thing uh, within that bill of materials. So that'll be a really useful tool. And so that's the basics of how to create uh, an assembly drawing in, um, inside of Onshape.